Hi YouTube and welcome to another vlog. I know it's only been a week since my last one but a couple of things happened this week that I thought well I might as well make another one. As you can see from the title Interghost, Electron User and Game Station well, how do all of these things tie together? Well, firstly, I got to meet Interghost in the flesh yesterday. I popped round to his house and he gave me all of these. And that is a big pile of Electron user magazines. Yep, Interghost was kind enough to give me all of those for free. Yeah, he said he'd pick them up um, when he got some Spectrum magazines and I think those were bundled in with it. I don't think he's ever had an Acorn Electron, he didn't seem to have any interest in them because he said uh, you can have them, which I think, Adam, you are a legend. I mean, that is such a nice thing to do. Um, those of you that have seen my videos will know that the Acorn Electron has a place in my heart being uh, as it was my first ever games machine. I, I really do love it. And flicking back through all of those old magazines really brings back a lot of memories. I, I actually, I think I've only got one copy of Electron User from, from my youth, from my, from my early years as a gamer. I didn't really, uh, because that would have been about the age of 10. The one I've got is from 1985. And I don't think I really bought that many magazines. I was more into comics at that age, although I liked games. Um, it wasn't until I was maybe 12 or 13 I really started buying video games magazines, but it was really nice to flick through all of those Electron user magazines, just purely um, to see the, the games that I'd forgotten about, so many of them that upon seeing an image of it, I'm like, oh my god, I remember that one, oh, I remember that, or seeing an advert for it, so, ah, oh, thanks, thanks Adam, that's a very cool gift, so hopefully I can think of something in the future that I can that can give to you, or maybe I'll pay it forward. Maybe I'll maybe I'll give something to somebody else. You know, I don't know if you guys have seen that movie or read the book, but it's a it's a nice concept. Okay, so that's that's kind of the first two things I mentioned there, but also Game Station. Well, what about Game Station? Well, those of you who've been paying attention to Game Station's adverts recently, or maybe caught uh, Jurassic Junkies' rant last week, I think it was, or a, no, it wasn't a rant, it was just a video that he put up in the week talking about a great deal that he got at Game Station. Well, he traded in 12 games, he got £127. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, well, that can't be right. Game Station have got to be got to have messed up somewhere because some of the games, the trade-in value they were giving him was more than the games are actually worth. Well, they were giving you know, for example, five pound trade-in for something that they would have sold for four pounds or three pounds a couple of weeks ago. So, I thought something's wrong. I'm going to rush down to Game Station tomorrow and trade in some of my titles, my less desirable titles. As it turned out, <laughs> that was a Friday, so I couldn't. I had to work on Friday, so I had to wait until the Saturday. So on Saturday morning, I went over to my nearest Game Station. I took 10 games with me and asked them you know, bring these through the till. I want to know how much each one is worth and then I'll figure out which ones I'm going to trade. And so I looked at them, oh, you know, they, they seemed like pretty good prices. And then I was expecting my £10 extra for every three of the games. But no, the price on the system factored in that £10. Whereas Mr Junkie, he was lucky enough to get that price plus the £10 on top. So... Did I get a good deal? Well, I'll let you figure that out. I've got my receipt somewhere. Oh, here it is. And I'll tell you what I traded in. I traded in Street Fighter 4, just the basic Street Fighter 4 on the Xbox 360, and they gave me £8.40 for that. Um, now, the reason I traded this one in is not because there's anything wrong with Street Fighter 4, it's just that I want one of the newer editions of it, and also I want it on the PlayStation 3 because I don't have an arcade stick for my 
um, for my Xbox, uh, whereas I've got the, the old Namco arcade stick on the PS1 and that can be used on the PS3. So I want to get uh, I want to get that on the PS3. Why I didn't buy it on the PS3 in the first place, I don't know. Um, I also traded in Resistance Fall of Man, the first one, because I didn't like it very much and they gave me £6.40 for that. And normally I see that knocking around for a couple of pounds. Um, what else? Storm Rise. Now I only bought this from Game or Game Station last week? A couple of weeks? No, it must have been longer than that. <laughs> Time flies so quickly I forget. I forget where I am. But the uh, the sales, the January sales, I think I must have picked that up. 98p. They gave me £4.40 trade-in. So, not bad. Another absolute turkey that I think I paid 99p for, something called Truth or Lies. I say it's a turkey, I'm only guessing that because I didn't even put it in the console to check it out. Again, £4.40. Um, UFC Undisputed, the 2009 edition, which I got for £1.98 a few weeks ago, traded that in for £4.40. Um, oh dear, Disney sing it. Uh, this is something I bought for for Emma, my girlfriend. No, fiance. I'm gonna have to remember that, yes. I'm I'm engaged now, so <laughs> I have to remember to call her fiance or she'll get very upset with that one. Um Disney Sing It, I bought her that as a joke. It was 49p from Toys R Us. Again, 440. Um so I think in total those six games I got about £32 trade in and so I swapped those for these three. So yeah, so three games there that I really want to play. I mean obviously I, I mentioned this before, I did get Arkham Asylum last year at some point and I only paid £5 for it but the disc didn't work properly so I took it back to cash converters, they didn't have another one for me to change it for. So um, I've been without Batman Arkham Asylum since then, so I'm really excited to play that. Um, I had a little go of it, in fact just have a look at this clip, you can see a bit of me getting beaten to a pulp. So it's an absolutely fantastic game, I really, I can't wait to get tucked into this one. Unfortunately, there are probably 10 or 15 games waiting that need to be played before this one, but at least I know it's there, it's sitting on the shelf now, and um, I can play that any time I like. The other one I picked up there was the uh, UFC Undisputed 2010, so I traded in 2009, I got 2010. As you can see, the price there, 9.99. Mm, well, I mean, I could have picked this up for six pounds across the road in CEX, but you know it's. Uh, I think it's a fair swap when you think a couple of those awful games nearly gave me five pounds, um, which I, if you think Storm Rise and Sing It combined, I only paid one pound forty nine for them, whereas I got eight pounds trade in value. I think that's a fair swap there. So yeah, UFC two thousand and ten played it just a little bit. I. Mm, I like it. It's more complicated. I'm, it's going to take more, uh, more effort to get through this one. Uh, as you can see here, I, I had a quick go of it, um, and it was like getting bullied in the playground, and I got totally schooled. I mean, look at it. Uh, whereas on UFC 2009, it was much easier to pick up and play. Um, and it was a bit repetitive in that I could pretty much use the same techniques against everyone. I've got the feeling with this that I really need to change up my strategy for each opponent. There's a lot more involved in the managerial side of it, your coach and the training and uh, your attributes, atrophy, uh, if you don't continue to train all of the areas of your, of your skills, your grappling, your submission moves and You'll, you know, because I, I tend to like just the, the stand-up fighting, the, the punching and the kicking, but if you don't pay attention to the other parts of your game, the skills that you've acquired will diminish over time. So it's, it's much more involved, 
Again, it's going to sit on the shelf for a while until I've played through a few other games. The last one I decided to pick up was something I've been wanting for ages. Left for Dead. But I've kept saying to myself, oh, okay, when I can get it for five pounds, I'm going to pick it up. And I never saw it. I never saw it for less than ten pounds. And, um, yeah, I've been wanting to play it since getting the demo on the PC and it's scaring the hell out of me. I remember playing one night with the lights off and some headphones on and, um, yeah, it's a very atmospheric game. Again, as you can see here, I had a quick go of it. Um, I'm not very good at it, but it really is an enjoyable shooter and uh, one that I'd like to take online and play in the you know, cooperative mode. But there we go, those three games traded in for the other six. Um, let me know what you think, was that, was that a, good, a good deal? I think so. Uh, the only, what I consider really quality game there was uh, Street Fighter and I want to get, as I said, a PS3 more recent version of it, so um, I'm very happy. Yeah, not quite the great deal that I was expecting. I was, ex you know, I'd, when I went to the desk, I actually picked up a big stack of games that I wanted to buy and it just meant me searching through them for the ones that I wanted the most in the end because uh, I was kind of hoping that I'd get the ridiculous deal that Mr. Junkie got, but alas, it wasn't to be, but still, not bad, not bad. Well, it's almost the end of the video, as you, as you can see, looking at the counter, it's uh, quite a short one today which is good, makes a change for me. There's a couple of other things I'd quickly like to mention. Um, one of those is, have any of you found that you've lost a lot of your subscriptions? Now, not subscribers, subscriptions. I've noticed, and I only noticed this because it was Steve Benway's channel that had been removed from my channel, like of my, my subscription listings. Um, and this happened when he was on his hiatus and I thought, wow, he's been away for a long time. And so I checked and there was no Steve Benway there in my list of subscriptions. And I've noticed a couple of others have gone missing as well. And I don't know, has this happened to any of you guys? Cause it's really annoying. I mean, it's not so bad when it happens to a channel like Steve Benway's because that's something I watch regularly and if I don't see the videos popping up on my front page of YouTube I know something's wrong but if it's one of the other channels that I just watch from time to time it can be um, can be quite annoying and I suppose conversely for other people watching my videos because I don't make them that regularly I was thinking there's probably people who they watch my stuff maybe once in a while, but if my stuff isn't popping up on their YouTube page, they might not know that I've made anything and probably just thought, oh, he's just leaving it another two months to make another gamer's living room. Which is another thing I should mention. I, I won't let this drag on too much longer, but yes, gamer's living room. I filmed episode seven. I edited it. I sat down, I watched it and thought, I hate this episode. It was, it was rubbish. I was just not happy with it, so I deleted everything. And I'm going back to the drawing board, and I'm going to film that again, and I'm, I'm going to get it done. It was just proving, it was proving difficult. You see, what I'd done with, um, I think, episode six as well, and this one, I tried to do them without any form of scripting, um, and just ad-libbing the whole thing. And I just ended up filming so much more that trying to, uh, I was thinking I'll do it, some directors do this that I've heard of where they just go and film loads of footage and then cobble something together at the end and it just kind of works because those guys have got a lot of skill whereas I haven't and so I need a little bit more structure, not to the point where I script every word that I'm going to say but I like to have a rough idea of the order of, in which I'm going to say things and roughly what I'm going to say. So. I'm going to go back to the drawing board, r actually write it all to some, well, not write all of it, but you know, get at least a rough outline and film it all again. At least I don't have to go and film 
chunks of the gameplay footage because I've already played through the game already. So that's still going to take a while um, to come up, but I, I think what I'm going to do, I know I've been kind of getting caught up in making videos on this channel and this channel is really only supposed to be originally a supplement to the Gamers Living Room channel because that's where I wanted to focus all my attention and really in my heart that's where I want to focus my attention but it's so much easier to make these just sitting in front of a camera chatting to you guys and there's always as much feedback and comments and all of the good stuff that YouTube has um, all of the interaction comes through making these, but really in my heart I want to be making those more involved videos um, because I actually like the editing and the, the process behind um, the filmmaking. So I will be getting to that at some point and I'm going to try my hardest to make quite a lot of those in, in the rest of the year, try and make quite a few more Gamers Living Room episodes. So you might see less content on this channel and more on that one if things go my way. So that's almost it. But the one last thing I wanted to ask to you guys is, is anyone going to replay this? Actually, no, it's you won't be because it's not called Replay now. It's called Play Expo. I just noticed this week, I think it was press release was a couple of weeks ago that, uh, no, more like a month ago now, that mentioned the change in name and also the change in venue. It's moving from Blackpool to Manchester. And I was wondering who is going, because I'm planning to go this year. I'm going to try my hardest to go. That's the one event that I really want to go to this year. And especially after watching everybody's videos about it last year, all of you guys whose channels I watch, meeting up and having a great time and I want to be part of that because as, as much as I love watching your videos I actually want to meet people like I said at the beginning of the video it was great to meet Interghost although it was only very briefly because he had to go out to work but it's very nice to meet someone else who I've um, conversed with via YouTube to actually see them in the flesh so I'd love to meet um, as many of you as possible so that's what I'm hoping will happen at, uh, not replay, no, Play Expo this year. And I don't know about any of you have already heard that name before and maybe have thought, Play Expo, are they changing the Expo? Are they changing it from purely retro to being more inclusive of mainstream gaming? I don't know. I hope not, because it is nice to think that there is a dedicated retro gaming uh, event out there. Well, I'm going to stop waffling and uh, stop this dragging on too long. But thanks guys for watching. I look forward to reading your comments. And um, well, from my spare room to wherever you are, this is Cyman signing off. Bye bye.